have uh, seven hallmarks of aging, and then they they had nine in that in the two thousand thirteen. I should probably emphasize that it wasn't that they identified things that I had overlooked. It was just a different way of subdividing. They, uh, you may ask, what's the point of subdividing the many, many different types of damage that the body accumulates into a manageable number of categories? Why, why is that useful? The reason it's useful, it, at least the reason I thought it was useful, it, and the reason why I still prefer my classification, is that it helps us to organize our thoughts around the nature of intervention. So in my classification, for each of the seven categories, there may be many examples within the category, like many different tissues having the same, having damage of the same type. But all of those examples can be addressed, can be repaired by the same kind of therapy. So for example, you can have loss of cells, cells dying and not being automatically replaced by cell division. Mm. And that can happen in many different places in the body, in the brain or in the heart or whatever. And of course, the cells that are lost are different, different types of cells. And putting them back needs different types of therapy, but not really very different because it's all stem cell therapy, putting cells into the body that you've pre-programmed in the laboratory into the right state so that they know what to do to divide and replace the cells that the body is not replacing on its own. And different stem cell therapies for different tissues have differences, but only differences of detail. All stem cell therapies have a huge amount in common. And that's incredibly important because it means that once you've got a couple of them working reasonably well, getting the next one working and the one after that will be far quicker and easier because you'll be able to reuse all the knowledge that you've gained in debugging the first one or two. Right. So actually, what I was going to point out, is recently there was a new paper by a couple of um, doctors in Russia that mm -hmm. identified the 10th um, hallmark of aging, which was actually one of the seven that you originally had, which was the... Um, extracellular matrix stiffening. Mm -hmm. So does it feel, I guess two things, is it, does it feel good to be validated? And um, can you explain a little bit about that? Because it, it's not one of the more familiar, like people are familiar with mitochondria. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, so first of all, I wouldn't exactly call it validation. I mean, no one really denied that this was an important component of aging. In fact, when the original 2013 paper came out, and of course I know all the authors, because he's one of the good friends of mine, I wrote to them immediately saying, uh, have you noticed that the word glycation just doesn't exist in your entire paper? You know, it's a little embarrassing, really, isn't it? And they said, oh, dear, yes, it is. There should be 10. So like, everyone knew that there should be 10 right from then. It's just that we didn't talk about it very much. Right. Um, um, but yeah, so what is this? It's simply that um, during life, there is very little turnover and uh, recycling of this lattice of proteins called the extracellular matrix. So what is this extracellular matrix anyway? It's a, it's a bunch of proteins that are secreted by cells and they are linked together in a very regular array, that's why I call it a lattice, um, uh, by enzymes, you know, this happens on purpose. And the result is that this matrix acts like a kind of elastic, um, uh, elastic band, really. Uh, in different tissues, it's slightly different, but it's broadly the same stuff. Most of it's made of this protein called collagen. And um, it, elasticity is actually really important for a bunch of our tissues. It's, it's important cosmetically in the sense that uh, as elasticity is lost, you get wrinkles. It's important for eyesight because the lens of the eye needs to be elastic in order to focus on nearby things. And that becomes less easy as, as people get older. And the most life-threatening one is that the major arteries become less elastic. And that means that they can't buffer the heartbeat in the same way that they used to. So basically the heart has to pump harder in order to get blood around the circulation and that increases blood pressure and that's all bad for lots of reasons that people are familiar with. Um, so of course the question now is how does this loss of elasticity actually occur? And the chemistry of that has actually been quite, quite well understood for a long time. Essentially what happens is that some of the amino acids that are components of these proteins of the extracellular matrix combine chemically with sugar that's in the circulation, with the floating part. And the chemical reactions that happen are, they don't happen very often, and very often they go backwards again, they reverse and the sugar molecule falls off, so it's no problem. But occasionally they attach and then they rearrange in a way that makes them more stable. And very occasionally what happens is that a second chemical reaction happens that causes a link to another amino acid of a neighboring protein of the extracellular matrix. 
So you get this bond between the two proteins that shouldn't be there. Mm. The bonds that should be there are in this regular array of those drives, but these new bonds occur randomly, and that stiffens the tissue as time goes on. So what we need to do is break those accumulating bonds. And in principle, that sounds relatively easy because the bonds are actually, we know the chemical structure of them fairly well. And the chemical structure is completely different from anything that the body lays down on purpose, which means that it should be a reasonably easy thing to develop drugs that will target and break these unwanted bonds without having much effect on anything else. But lo and behold, it turned out to be not that simple. And it's taken ages and ages and most people gave up. And essentially the reason why the um, authors of 20, the 2013 paper forgot about it was because it had become a bit of a backwater in gerontology by that time. Um, but we hadn't forgotten about it because we at Sense, we focus on the most difficult things because we want to make the most difference. We don't want any, any part of damage to be neglected and to kill us all anyway, however well we take all the others. So uh, we were already funding groups uh, working on this. And in, I think, about 2016, uh, we were able to um, publish a really great breakthrough um, that has led to the formation of a startup company that's working on breaking probably the most important, most advantages of these cross links. Excellent. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Um, According to the SENS Research Foundation, the Antonov Foundation has pledged to match all donations from now through December the 31st, up to 600,000. In addition, a team of SRF supporters have offered a further 300,000 matching grant, which means that the first 300,000 donated will be tripled. Anyone who is interested in supporting SENS organization for combating aging, please find the SENS website link in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.